What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts and I'm back with the Texans film breakdown. Today we are going to look at Laramie Tunsil and just how great he was for us. With the big trade, I was skeptical that it was going to be worth it to be completely honest. However, Tunsil is a top 3 offensive tackle in the NFL in my opinion and I really think he's the best left tackle in the league. He's still got room to grow and I'm really excited to see his future with us. He's really the big piece to this offensive line that we've completely transformed and we can rest easy knowing that Deshaun Watson's blindside is in good hands. So I'll be looking at what makes him so great and the little things he can work on to get to his true ceiling. Also, when watching this video, keep in mind Tunsil's technique because it's going to be really applicable for my Titus Howard video which will be out on Thursday or maybe out right now depending on when you're watching this. Titus had a solid rookie season but he has a super high ceiling and a long way to go to reach that. Luckily, he can learn from Tunsil, and I think they're going to grow into the best tackle duo in the league. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Also really quickly, make sure to check out the Texans Unfiltered website and podcast. We've got a lot of great content there for you guys, which will be linked in the description below. Alright, let's get into the film, because the film don't lie. So starting off with Tunsil's strengths. He takes pretty aggressive pass sets compared to most tackles and this can really hurt tackles but with him he's so strong and he's so quick with his feet that it doesn't matter and it actually helps him and it's a big part of his game. So on the left side here and most tackles will take roughly a 45 degree angle step for their first step however Tunsil he takes a little bit of a shallower angle and so that gets him out in front of Shaq Barrett here quicker and more aggressively ready to strike. And so you can see at this point that he's pretty aggressive with it, right? Just look at the angle of his feet compared to the angle of right tackle Chris Clark's feet right here. Tunsil's is a lot more kind of horizontal, whereas Clark's you can see is more vertical and kind of like diagonal in that 45 degree angle that I was talking about. And this could work against him. You could have Barrett just blow by him because he doesn't have a good enough angle to recover. Because of how Tunsil's feet are placed, he really has to drop them and cover more space. He would have to drop that left foot a lot. If Barrett does get by him to the left, he would have to drop that foot so much and cover so much ground that it would be hard because he'd be flipping his hips and turning and running essentially. And at that point, you're basically screwed. So that's why this quick set doesn't work for many tackles. However, that's not the case with what happens here. Because of this kind of quick set that Tunsil has, he actually gets to attack Barrett faster than most tackles would be able to. And so he doesn't allow Barrett to build up his rush, build up his speed, which is a big part of Barrett's game. And so because he attacks Barrett so quickly like this, he's able to get hands on him. And look at the hand placement. It's pretty perfect right here. Hand placement is right into the defender's chest. And so that nullifies him and slows him down and just completely honestly locks him down at this point and he isn't really able to get anything off he tries but Tunsil sticks right with him and it just shut down completely and so that ability to quickly get out to him and just start his rush and mess up the timing because most pass rushers aren't used to tackles attacking them that quickly so it messes with their head it messes with their timing and they have to rethink their rushes so that's how beneficial Laramie Tunsil's quick sets can be they're not full quick sets but they're more aggressive than most and so we'll see again here, Tunsil's, look at Tunsil's pass set versus Chris Clark's yet again. Good riddance of Chris Clark, to be honest. My heart can finally go back to normal, so thank God for that. Tunsil was basically horizontal at this point. He just barely takes a step back by like a couple inches with his left foot there, compared to Clark who takes a pretty diagonal, kind of 45 degree-ish kick step backwards. And so what this does for Tunsil is, you can see here that he gets one and then two kick steps out instead of your typical three. This allows him to attack the defensive end quicker and throw off his timing like I mentioned before, which can actually be a big hindrance to their game. And so he gets his two kick steps out and the defensive end can only get two steps towards him. And so he's not expecting him to come at him this quickly, but Tunsil's able to get hands on him really quick. He punches him first. And that's a big part of Tunsil's game. We'll get into his punch a bit later, but he's almost always the first one to strike because of these aggressive kick sets. And so because he's the first one to punch, it just throws the defensive end off their game. He gets into their chest, again, good hand placement and just stuns him and locks him down. Look at him keep on trying to fight, but Tunsil stays right with him. And at this point, he's cleared such a nice side on the left side of the pocket for Watson. There's so much space there. Like, there's no penetration at all. Tunsil just has his left side locked down. So here it is again, and you can really see how horizontal Tunsil's first step to the left is. This one's really pronounced. 
and it works out for him. You know, like I've been saying, it may not work for every tackles. They really don't want you to do this. They do it sometimes in college, but Tunsil, it goes to his advantages because he's able to attack and strike the defensive end quickly. And if he needs to, he has the foot speed to recover from this. But he's rarely ever put in that position where he has to recover because his hands are just so strong. Whenever he gets hands on you, it's like game over. It's not even fair. Like look at this one against Brian Burns who had a great rookie season. He tries to go left then right, but it doesn't matter because Tunsil can just mirror him with his quick feet and it's over. He can't even get close to Watson. And just like this one, now he locks down Justin Houston. Once he gets hands on you, boom, you're stood up. It's over. You're locked down. So that really turns into the next point I want to talk about being his punch and his length. Tunsil is a great athlete and his long arms really help him to fight off defensive linemen. Look at him always punch first here and he always punches the defensive lineman perfectly placed right into the center of their chest. And you want to punch them there because that's where you're going to be the most powerful and that's where you're going to be able to control them the most. If you can get into their chest, they're going to be pretty helpless, honestly. So look at this one is a pretty good example of it. He gets right into the chest of this of this Colts defensive end. And I'll break it down a bit slower here. So you can see him punch first. And look at that extension. Look at how long his arms here. And he gets right into the chest. And the defender is helpless. He can't even reach Tunsil. And this is a huge point of emphasis for Titus Howard. I'll talk about it in the next video, which it'll be up Thursday or it could be up right now. But he is not great at punching first. He's slow at shooting his hands and he always has them lowered when he's coming out of his stance and that makes it harder for him to shoot them up quickly and go attack and punch first. Instead he catches guys a lot of the time and that's his biggest weakness right now. That's where he loses a lot of his reps but Tunsil is never like that. He uses his length nicely and defenders can't even reach him. And so if you can't reach Tunsil, if you can't punch him back and use a move and throw a move on him to try and defeat those arms, you're screwed. And look at him right there, he, he can't do anything. He tries to rip underneath, but Tunsil just locks on and you're not going anywhere, buddy. And even look at this one against 55 who flies off the ball, but then once he meets Tunsil, Tunsil punches him first and just stops him dead to the right. He gains no ground on Tunsil at all here. And a big part of this is like I've been saying, is having your hands ready to shoot and fire and punch first. Look at how they're up in a raised position, already ready the elbows are locked in as an offensive lineman that's what you want and they're ready to punch you'll see in the titus howard video that his hands are rarely ever like this and they're more down by their by his thighs and by his knees and, and he's just not ready but tunsil always is and it comes in handy so he can punch first get into the chest and just absolutely stonewall this defensive lineman you can really see how his length is just a complete weapon, keeping defenders just far away from him so that they can't get close and hit him with a quick move. And the pure strength out of his hands to whenever he gets hold of you, he gets grip of you, boom, you're not going anywhere. He'll keep mirroring his feet with you wherever you go and just follow you like an annoying little kid. So we saw how good Tunsil is in the past game, he's locked down, but he's also good in the run game too, and especially with double teams with Max Sharping. The two had a great chemistry, and I posted a Max Sharping video, which you guys can check out as well, to really see how they work double teams. And so, like this one here, they just work together really nicely, and look how far that Tunsil's able to push back that defensive end, creating a huge lane for this big run by Duke Johnson. It's amazing to see, he's really good at creating a drive on these double teams. Look how low he gets on this one, and drives out number 91, completely out of that hole, and just doing his job very nicely. He can really show off his power on these double teams. And he just works so well with Max Sharping. No matter who's making the first initial contact, the other person always comes over to help. And then boom, look at that big push from Tunsil. He plays angry on these double teams. And I absolutely love that. Just showing off that big amount of push to create a lane for the running back. You just love to see it. I love that mentality from the O-lineman. And look at just how far he pushes this defensive end with Sharping. And then he also gets to the next level. Because making that first initial block is one thing. But if you can get to the second level, that's going to be all the better. And he can do a little bit better of that job. He can do it more consistently. But he definitely has the ability to do so. So, no player is perfect. And I'm sure we all know and are unhappy with Laramie Tunsil's false starts. He had 14 for the Texans last year, however I really think that's just an outlier and having to do with him having very little practice time when coming to the team. Because in his first 3 years he only had 13 in total compared to the 14 that he had in one season. So I really expect that these are going to go down as he gets more comfortable and more time with the playbook, with the O-line, with Deshaun and this number is definitely going to go down in the future. Now the other thing I want to talk about isn't a weakness on Tunsil's actual game but it's more of how we use him schematically. And so I really think that we can be using him in more complex ways. And shout out to Matt Weston from Battle Rub Blog. He's the one who kind of really 
opened my eyes up about this, and I think it's completely true. I think because it was his first year in the system, we didn't ask him to do a whole lot of complex blocks. A lot of the time he would just be making these simple one-on-one -on -one blocks in the run game. We're not really doing anything too crazy. And don't get me wrong, he'll make these one-on-one -on -one blocks really good, but I just think his potential is so much more. He's such a great athlete. We should be asking him to do a whole lot more to add to the offense. We can have him pulling like on these plays where we've seen he's able to do it and it's very beneficial to the offense, but we just need to see it more. Another thing I would love to see him do more often is getting out in space, especially on screens, because he's tested as an elite athlete. That was one of his main calling cards coming out of college. And look at him here, just getting out in space, creating contact on that DB to create a bigger lane for Duke Johnson on, these, on this play. And so I would love for us to use the screen game more often with Duke and David Johnson, get the ball in their hands in space, and use our athletes like Laramie Tunsil to get in space and attack these vendors and block them. It's only going to add another dimension to the offense and more value from Tunsil. Alright, that'll do it for my Laramie Tunsil film breakdown. He's such a good left tackle and it's great to have a strong offensive line after all those awful years. It's scary to think that Tunsil can get a lot better, and I really believe we'll see that come to fruition. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. The question of the day is, do you think the Laramie Tunsil trade was worth it? Let me know. So as I mentioned, I'm a part of Texans Unfiltered. I write in-depth articles about the Texans and appear on our podcast as well. We've got a lot of great content for you guys. So if you love the Texans, make sure to check us out. Our links will be in the description. Alright, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more. Take care, everyone.